Hi class! We are going to study about derivative of exponential function today. This one will be very short section, also next one too. But I'm going to ask you just to make sure that you do at least 10 questions because it will come back later and then chapter 3 and 4 later on. I don't want you to have a hard time. So just make sure you do practice at least 10 questions on the homework basically, okay? Then it will get easier when it gets to harder derivative later on. Trust me. So exponential function, we have seen actually our graph of e to the x and then we have drawn, um, driven what the function of the graph looks like. So it was a function like that and then when we take a derivative actually we saw that it's the same. So very special and this exponential function is very special and especially if it's a natural exponent, natural exponent, then e to the x after you take in derivative, do you remember this notation? I try to use now more often so that you get ready for the next um, 3.6 or 7. So it comes back to itself. Okay, so very simple, right? So let's look at the example here. So take a derivative of the function inside. Take a derivative of function inside. So, oh, before we do this one, let me explain to the next one. If we have an exponential rule, how we take the derivative when we do not have a base e, then you are going to take a derivative, it come back to itself like e to the x, and then very front, you have a factor of ln a, okay, ln a. So just remember you get yourself, and then you're gonna multiply that base with natural log. So let's look at this one. If I wanna take a derivative, Three, I'm gonna leave it, we learn about the factor rule. And then two to the x, if I take a derivative, as I say, I'm gonna have my itself, two to the x, and then I'm going to have a factor of natural log of a two. This is a number, that's a number, right? And then plus next one, four as a factor, just to pull out, and then e to the x, it's going to be itself. So I'm going to simplify nicely. I guess this is already look nice to me, right? <laughs> I guess much I cannot simplify. I will just copy the same thing. I thought that I could do something better. So this one is fine. This one is fine too for me because not much go to. So now I want you to remember e to the x becomes e to the x. a to the x becomes a to the x times natural log of a base a. So I want you to try in class activities quickly and then think about the next two questions if we can apply this rule, okay? So did you get to do in class activities? This is the answer I got. It was just a first straightforward one step. So now I want you to think about next two. Do you think I can use exponential rule? Yes, I can. First one is the same as this one. Do you see the difference is right here and this one? So I change the x to 5x. And the next one, instead of addition, I change to multiplication. Okay, that's the differences. And this case, I can take a derivative of this part, but we haven't learned this derivative yet. Yeah, isn't it e to the 5x actually e to the 5x? No, this one is a composite function. What I am saying is this is two function combined, not just e to the x. So if you have a combined function, then we have to use a different rule, which we will visit two sections after 3.4. So in this case, our derivative, yes, it is e to the 5x, and then we are going to actually take a derivative of this one again. So this is actually the answer. So careful, and you have to see that if there's a function combined, then yeah, here's a function combined. Yeah, but they are addition each other. We learned that if it's addition to each other, you can take the derivative separately. This one, you can take the derivative separately. However, we didn't learn the rule yet when we have two functions composed together. How about this one? Yeah, well, this one is only one function. I see that this times this, right? Also, do you see that I can simplify the 12 times 3 to the x times e to the x? right then can we take a derivative of this one we actually haven't learned the rule of a multiplication 
So this case, we have two functions combined again. We can say that this times this, right? In this case, we haven't learned yet. So that's going to be 3.3. So we cannot take derivative yet, whatever you are desiring. So just be careful. We only can do addition and subtraction. And then if there's a factor with constant number, like 5, 4, or 1, or pi, equal to 2, these are all you can actually use as a factor of. But other than that, you cannot use those rules. So careful. So let's look at now main dish. Already main dish? Yeah, but there's some question waiting for you. So main dish is going to be the population of the world in billions can be modeled by function given as this number. And the T is since 2010. They say find and then interpret what does f of zero and then f prime of zero. Did you hear that? I said prime. So derivative will also say prime, okay? So that's prime. Also double, uh, second derivative, we say double prime. So let's try to figure that number. If I plug in zero, then that's going to be this to the zero's power. So I'm going to have 6.85. Let's see what was the unit. Input time as year. And output is going to be population in billions. So now the world population is 6.85 billion right now. Then what is this? That means we have to take a derivative. So let's look at this one. If I take a derivative, that will be first 6.85, leave it as a factor. And then I said we're going to have a itself. And then I'm going to multiply natural log of the number of a base. So they said, what is the my input? That's a zero. So if I plug in zero, anything to the anything to the power becomes one. So all I need to punch into calculator is punching in this number. So let's punch in. I want you to do it together with me too. Learn how to punch in numbers for your homework. Six point eight five times natural log 1.013 okay so I got 0 0.088476 I like to use a lot of numbers so that you can compare with me then of course you can use about four decimal I'm okay with four decimal in this case why because we're talking about billion numbers right I think 0 0.1 billion pretty big numbers right so that's what I have, but what's the unit? What's the unit? That means rate of change. So all I need to put is my unit as a billion per year. So now I found the value. Let's understand what it means. When is the zeroth year? That's 2010. So year 2010, the world population was 6.85 billion. Then how much population is changing around 2010 because that's the rate of change in 2010 around that one year right so around at that time rate of change is 0 0.088476 billion okay if i say like this do you think people will be happy in the newspaper yes and no right so i will change this one actually when people understand better i think it would be better if i was a news reporter 88.476 million per year now i feel it because the united states has a third uh, 300 million population so now i feel all oh, 88.476 million people increase around that time then class i have another question i want to see what's the population growth right now then what should i plug in here plug in 10 right so for fun i want to actually do it so let's multiply 1.013. Young, isn't it 10th power really big? Not in this one. 0 0.013, not going to make that big. Okay, then I get, when I put 10, I get 0 0.100674. So rate of change I'm doing, I'm not doing population. We don't need pre-cal, right? So 
What does that mean? Before it increased about 88 million people per year around year 2010, now rate of change says it increased about 100 million point six. It increases more than before. And you know why, right? Population is exponential function. So now I want you to do in class activities and then compare the answer with okay, me. Okay, how did it go? Wasn't too bad, right? So compare the answer. First one, yeah, here's the real data. So population in US is was 282 million in year 2000. And then population growth is actually about less than 1%. And that makes this one. So let's see. So what does that mean? Year 2000, the population in USA was 282 million people. And then at that time, how much population growing per year, around that time per year, it increased about 2.5 million people increase per year. You think it's a big? 2.5 people increasing per year? Yeah? If it's a 10 years, it increased 10 million. Oh, no, 25 million, right? Something like that. And then next one, compare the answer of your first derivative. I just wanted to see that these two are totally different. Don't get confused. Oh, I made a mistake. Again, right? I made always one mistake, sorry. And this one, do you see why? Because 3 to the pi is a number. If you take the derivative, it has to be number, like 5. If you take a derivative, it's a 0, because slope is a 0 at 5. So there are now, this is it actually. We're done with actually exponential functions. So I put two questions that we can prepare for next exam so that you can do better. So try this one, pause it, and then there are two questions, and try and compare with me. Good okay, job. let's compare answer with me. So how did you do? We haven't done derivative for a little bit, for those who are doing homework now. Uh -huh. So I found 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of the zeros. So I marked it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And as I see, this is decreasing. So I put my graph below the x-axis, here to here increasing. But I see that it increased about 1 point about 1, 1 1.2 so I just uh, make it a little bit steeper and then this one looks less so down down and then this part so make sure that when it's increasing or decreasing same thing this is also I see 1, 2, 3 so decreasing, increasing and then as you see your graph here to here decreasing that means my derivative graph is below the x-axis and increasing class I know my video is sometimes long, just please listen to explanation because explanation is very, very important in calculus. And example five, so I want to see that actually you can see what this function can be. Did you notice you can rewrite as a power function again? So after power function, then you can take a derivative and I plug in four. So I got the slope three at four. So I got the slope at four, I got slope three and then so slope is a 3, and then point that passing through is a 4, 8. Where did I get 8? 4, I plugged in 4 times 2 is 8. So with using this information, put it into a point slope form, I got y is equal to 3x minus 4. And you guys have been doing really good job helping me with mistakes. So thank you. And this is it. Okay, good job everybody. So I will see you next section, but please do homework carefully, faithfully, okay?